Yankees. are back home in Toronto after a nine-game road trip. The Yankees are in town to take on the Blue Jays to start a seven-game homestand. Anytime the Bronx Bombers come to Toronto, lots of fans follow them north. And the Blue Jay fans come out, they want to see the big bombers from New York take on the hometown Blue Jays. Hello, everybody. I'm Buck Martinez along with Pat Tabler. And Pat, the last time we saw tonight's starter, Brandon Morrow, pitch on this mound at Rogers Center, he was nearly perfect. He took a no-hitter into the ninth inning with two outs against Tampa Bay. I've never seen him finer, and he had some of those Ray hitters who are very good hitters looking silly all afternoon. He got a great breaking ball. Watch this one to Evan Longoria. It's a good hitter looking pretty bad. He could spot his fastball on both sides of the plate, totally dominating Tampa Bay. It took him 137 pitchers to do that. They gave him nine days off, and he just wasn't as sharp the next time through against the Oakland A's. The ball was up. He gave up a couple of runs in the first inning, settled down and threw scoreless ball his other three innings, but he was on a pitch count of 80, and once he got to 80, they took him out of the game. And baseball players, they get into a routine, and when you go on the road, that routine is messed up. That's something that has hurt Brandon Morrow this season. When you look at his home road splits, he has been almost perfect at home. Seven and one compared to two and five on the road. He's back at Rogers Center. He should be ready to take on the Yankees here tonight. He'll be opposed by a young right-hander named Ivan Nova, making his first major league start. For more on Nova, let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Buck Nova was signed as a 17-year-old undrafted free agent out of the Dominican Republic. He has had an outstanding year in AAA, a 12-3 and record with a 2.86 ERA. I talked to Tony Pena a little bit about him before this game. He says, look out for two things, the addition of a slider, which he started to incorporate into his game this year, and good late life on the fastball. We'll see how he fares here in his first big league start. Brandon Morrow loosening up to take on the Yankees. Last time we saw Morrow pitch in this ballpark, he threw a one-hitter, striking out 17 Tampa Bay Rays. Yankees and Blue Jays next.
Badger Sports Land, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Inside Rogers Center tonight, there's a buzz. The Yankees are in town. Blue Jays have played well against the Yankees this season. Blue Jays hold a 5-4 and four advantage over Joe Girardi's New York Yankees. The Yankee lineup is a good one. A couple of prominent names missing in the lineup tonight. No Derek Jeter. He's just getting a rest. And no Alex Rodriguez. He's on the disabled list. So Robinson Cano takes over in the cleanup spot. You can see what he's done taking over for a A-Rub. A 375 average. He's hit six home runs and driven in 19 from the cleanup spot. The Yankees haven't missed a beat with Cano batting fourth. Cano was asked about that. Uh, do you feel any extra pressure now that A-Rod is out of the number four hole and you've been elevated from your five hole? And he says, well, yeah, this guy hits 30 home runs, drives in 100 runs every single year. I feel a little bit pressure, but I feel like I'm also up to the task, and he certainly has, especially the last couple of series back at Yankee Stadium. Derek Jeter gets the night off. He had played 17 straight games, so Joe Girardi says, I gotta rest him sooner or later. The Yankees plan on playing in October, and they gotta keep their captain physically healthy. 121 starts for Derek Jeter this season. Remember, he's 36 years old, for 36 in June. You gotta have him fresh for September and October if you are the New York Yankees. Tonight's starting pitcher for the Blue Jays, Brandon Morrow takes the mound looking for his 10th win of the season. He has been locked in over the last two months. Brandon has not lost since June the 29th. 4-0 with an ERA, just over three over his last five starts. He threw that 137 pitch one hitter versus Tampa two starts ago. He was on a pitch count of just 80 the last time out. Four innings allowed two runs to Oakland in his last start. 2-0 in five career starts versus the Yankees. This is his fourth start versus New York this season. Blue Jays on defense back to full strength. In the outfield, it's Lewis Wells and Jose Bautista left to right. Edwin Encarnacion missed the entire Red Sox series. He's healthy again. He had a wrist injury. He's back at third base. He teams up with Junel Escobar on the left side. Aaron Hill is back in the lineup. He's over with Lyle Overbay on the right side. And Jose Molina, as we have seen all year long, is gets in Brandon Morrow tonight. Yeah, they have been so good together. There's Edwin Encarnacion back in the lineup. Missed the Boston series. Would love to have seen what he could do in that ballpark. Fly ball hitter. But Johnny Mack filled in admirably. Had a great series against the Red Sox. Encarnacion was really swinging it today in batting practice. Blue Jays played a nine-game road trip, went five and four on the road trip, and they started with the Angels, had three against Oakland, and finished up with the Red Sox. The record is not bad. Cito Gaston believes they could have had a couple of more wins. They pitched okay, and the batting average is a little bit deceiving. Yeah, it certainly is. That was counting the 16-2 thrashing of the Red Sox. You throw that game out, it goes down to 2-0-2. Runners in scoring position, just two for 16 in the last two games at Fenway Park, and that's why it drove that number down. The Jays anxious to get started on this seven game homestand. They are 32 and 26 here at home. Brandon Morrow is seven and one in this ballpark. We're set for action. It'll be the leadoff batter, Brett Gardner. First pitch just outside. Gardner's been a tough guy to figure out for the Blue Jays. 310 batting average against Toronto. Two balls and no strikes. He slaps the ball all over the place. He'll also bond a little bit. This is just his 11th start this season as a leadoff batter. Derek Jeter has been there pretty much the whole season long. I think he is suited for that leadoff spot with that good speed. Morrow falls behind 3-0. Oh. Molina expected that last pitch to be called a strike. 3-0 oh to the leadoff batter here in the first. As a strike. Right back in there with another good fastball. It's a full count. Morrow 2 0 with a 472 ERA in 11 appearances. He's made five starts against the Yankees. 
beat the Yankees last time he faced him in New York. 3-2. Cut on and missed. Ball comes all the way back from a 3-0 count. Strikes out Brett Gardner first out of the ball game. Something that we have seen from Brandon Morrow this year. 3-0, no problem. I could come back and he just blows him away. 75th time that Brett Gardner has gone down via the strikeout. Brandon Morrow picks up his first one. Nick Swisher, the two hitter here tonight, having a big year. 292 average for the Yankee switch hitter. And power, 22 home runs, 70 driven in. And a very good on base percentage of 365. I think he's a little bit better from the left side here. The numbers certainly bear that out. 19 of those 22 home runs from the left side. There's a good fastball. It's a ball on the strike to Swisher. Uh, it doesn't hurt that he's a switch hitter and can take advantage of that short porch as a left-handed batter at Yankee Stadium. Just get it up in the air and you got a chance. Two balls and a strike. One out here in the first. Well, still trying to find the consistent delivery. He was criticized after his last start. Four hits and two runs. Just four innings, but it really wasn't quite as bad as everybody made it out to be. I, I agree with that. He didn't have the command that he had two starts ago. But when do you ever? When you have that type of game as Swisher picks up the base on balls. He's got a report for Brandon Morrow. He's got a very strong arsenal of pitches. So when he goes to the mound, you never know what's going to happen. He's got the fastball slider, a two-seamer for the first time in his career, and a very good strong curveball. He has the ability to give you a little bit extra when he needs it, needs it, reaches back a little bit quicker, and he can throw the ball by you. No limit tonight. He was on a pitch limit last time out against the Oakland A's of 80 pitches. Bruce Walton says there's no limit tonight. He's good for 100, 110, which he's been doing and averaging about this season. Mark Teixeira, the average up to 256. He too is a switch hitter, takes an off feet pitch, just turned that fastball over, catches the outside corner. Almost a 300 career hitter against the Blue Jays with some major damage. 21 homers and 64 driven in. Good fastball right out ahead of Teixeira, 0 oh, 2. Different fastball tonight from Brandon Morrow than the one we saw in Oakland. It's working on a downward plane and it's got a little extra giddy up halfway to the plate. Breaking ball fouled off to Shera's foot. Mark to Shera, interesting the way he starts out each year, really cold. This year, combined numbers April and May hit 221 with just eight homers and 34 RBI. But don't look now. Teixeira is leading the league in runs scored. 92 runs scored. He'll take his walks. And the guys behind him will knock him in. Got a piece of it. Stays alive. Teixeira also has 89 RBI. That's good for fifth in the American League. And he always answers the questions. What about the slow start? What about the slow start? And he always responds, hey, Talk to you in October. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, the numbers will be there. What had everybody worried was it's usually just April for Mark to share. This year it stretched into May. Strike three call. Brandon Morrow throws a good fastball that catches the outside corner. Morrow's second strikeout of the night. He's got a good fastball. You can see it in the first inning, and he's able to paint it away to some of these left-handers. He got Gardner with a fastball, and this one right on the corner. To share it doesn't believe it. Morrow now with two outs and a runner at first. We'll deal with the red hot Robbie Cano. Robinson Cano drove in six yesterday. For the last four games, he's seven for 17 with 11 driven in. Hitting in the cleanup spot. Better fastball there just off the inside corner. One of the things I think that has made Robbie Cano the hitter to take himself to the next level 
is he seeing more pitches? His career high before the season for base on balls in his season with just 39. Drives it to the opposite field. This ball is trouble. Fred Lewis can't make a play. Swisher around second, headed around third. The relay throw misses the cutoff man. The Yankees will take the lead. One to nothing, New York. RBI number 87 for Robinson Cano, and he just keeps producing in that cleanup spot. He has the ability to hit the ball from foul line to foul line and with power. That ball was stung to left field. Watch it slice away from Fred Lewis. Thinks he has a shot at it, but when he reaches for it, it goes over his glove, bounces off the wall. He trips a little bit on the warning track and then allows Schiffer to come all the way around from first base to score. Blue Jays had a shot had Lewis hit the cutoff man Escobar in shallow left field. But Cano drives in the first run of the game with his 35th double. That ties him for ninth in the American League. Jorge Posada, the DH tonight. Mini three game hit streak for Posada. Doing a lot more DHing this year. Sir Belly, much younger, a little more active behind the plate, but Posada contends he still wants to get back there and contribute as a catcher as well. Oh, trying to pound him inside, missed with the first two pitches. Yankees 42 and 13 when they score first this season. Joe Girardi's ball club has the veteran starting staff that can take advantage of that early lead. They've also got that bullpen that can shut down teams late in the game, and the bullpen's been very good for them. See Yankee offense that has been very hot for Joe Girardi over the last six games. They have averaged seven and a half runs over the last six. That was the homestand against Seattle and Detroit. 3 0 fastball for a strike. Isn't it interesting, no matter what the Yankees are doing offensively, the first inning they forced Morrow into 22 pitches. And he's thrown the ball really well. I think he's got a good fastball. He's got good movement on it. But you're right. They force him to throw lots of pitches. Look at that. 3-1 fastball right down the middle. And he's got the confidence in his ability to go ahead and take it. Experienced lineups. We have seen them in the last two series. The Red Sox and now the Yankees. They have an idea what they want to do at the plate. And they stick with it. Full count. Two outs. Cano at second. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed. Posada went after a breaking ball. Morrow ends up striking out the side. But a walk in a two out double by Cano. The Yankees have taken a 1 nothing lead. will send his lineup to the plate against a young right-hander. Lewis Escobar, Bautista, top third in the order. Then Wells, Lynn, and Hill. Lyle Overbay in the Red Sox series will swing a red-hot bat. 
Five for ten, three home runs, two of those coming against John Lester, the left-hander, and he drove in nine for the series. Overbay really starting to swing the bat with a lot of confidence right now. And driving in some big runs. Ivan Nova, just 23 years old, six foot four, 210 pounds, makes his first major league start. This is his second stint with the Yankees. He pitched in two relief appearances for the Yankees back in May, throwing three scoreless innings versus the Tigers and the Twins. At Triple A, his numbers were pretty good as they just flashed across the board. An easy first pitch strike at 94. Fred Lewis hitting 271. Right back up the middle, through there into center field, a leadoff hit for Fred Lewis. Lewis gets it started in the first inning. And Ivan Nova will get it started with his first major league start. Three pitch mix, a fastball with good velocity, a curveball and a change. Sam talked about the slider. I'm not going to throw it in there yet because he hasn't mastered it. But a three pitch mix. He throws strike, just 48 base on balls and 115 minor league innings this season. He needs to pitch inside against some of these batters to bust them off the plate. Junel Escobar, the shortstop. Lewis Bluff, line drive into right center. Lewis headed around second. He'll go to third. Granderson gets it back in. The throw to second. Cut off. Second and third. Nobody out. Blue Jays. You know what? They are not going to mess around tonight and wait around for anything. They have the scouting report that Nova likes to throw a lot of fastballs. Anything close, they are going to be hacking as Escobar rips them right over the head of Robinson Cano. That bluff by Fred Lewis got Cano moving. And he makes it easily with the double, makes it into third base. Escobar has been a great addition to this lineup in the two spot. He and Lewis have teamed up time and time again. They've set the table for Bautista. It's a breaking ball up and away. Bautista's had a good run against the Yankees this year, including four home runs and nine RBI. Another breaking ball misses. You can see Bautista is going to let young Nova throw that breaking ball. He's looking for a fastball. That's what batters, good batters do when young pitchers come up. Let's see if he can command his breaking ball. And if he can't, I'm going to sit all over that fastball. 2 0 oh count. Didn't even give in. Threw another slider out of the zone. Joe Girardi's not really sure what he's going to get from Nova. They have seen him only in relief. And they just reminded Cervelli he's going to be swinging 3 0. Don't take anything for granted. Four pitch walked about Tista. The bases are loaded. Fans, the bases are loaded, and we're only one swing away from awarding the 60 inch Sharp Aquas Watchron TV. Watchron, for colors never before seen on TV. To enter, visit Hit a Home Run with Sharp.ca. And we didn't waste any time to load the bases. <laughs> Three batters in. Word of Wells has the first crack at it. The Jays have hit two grand slams this year Jose Bautista and Junel Escobar. Vernon Wells has a lot of opportunities against New York. And he's made the most of them. Way outside. Blue Jays have to be patient against Nova. Yeah, they certainly do. Joe Girardi was talking about him and they were asking him about it. He said, I saw him in spring training and I liked what I saw. He came in and he threw strikes. But right now, 
shocked a little bit here in his first big league start. Really got a keyhole now, if you will. Force Nova over the part of the plate. 2 0, oh, nobody out. Yankees scored one in the top half of the inning. Field. Lewis is tagging up. Gardner's got a strong arm. Lewis breaking for home. The throw to the plate. In time to get Lewis. Brett Gardner threw a one hop strike to Francisco Cervelli. And the Yankees cut down a run at the plate. Boy, you called it. He does have a very strong and accurate arm. One of the better arms in the outfield. The whole key was he got behind it and got his momentum coming towards home plate. Just a one hop shot for the catcher. An easy catch for Cervelli to sit, block the plate, and then dive right at Lewis. And that is a tough, tough double play if you're a Blue Jay fan. Bases loaded, nobody out. And a double play. Great defense on both ends. The throw and the catch and tag by Cervelli. Kind of a risky gamble in that situation. Medium depth fly ball with nobody out. Got Lynn coming up next, a left hander against yeah. the right hander. And you have him on the ropes. If the ball was deeper, it's, it's a no, no brainer. But the medium depth in the first inning. Here comes Brett Gardner getting right on top of it. You know, the importance of that also is he hit the cutoff man. Where Juno Escobar couldn't tag up and advance the third base. Just a perfect fundamental play by the Yankees. A ball on the strike to Adam Lynn. Popped back. Well, this could be a dramatic turnaround. Blue Jays had the bases loaded with nobody out. Nova was on the ropes. Yankees scored a run in that half of the inning. Robinson Cano with the two out double. Drove in Nick Swisher. Nick Keller here, the first base coach, also talking to Joe Girardi about positioning the infield. We've got a couple of young infielders on the left side. Breaking ball up and away. These are situations where Adam Lynn really comes through and thrives. Third in the American League with two strike RBI. So he really narrows his focus with two strikes. He's done a great job. Only Beltre and Alex Rodriguez have more two strike RBI. Cross up. Cervelli's lucky he could. Corral that one. How did he catch corral it? him? Well, I, I, him in a chest protector. <laughs> I don't think he caught it. He just trapped it. When you are expecting a fastball and you get that, what are the reaction play by Francisco Cervelli on that curveball? No idea where that ball is going to go. And that's the best breaking curveball he's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> And he got a smile out of it. That's good. He kept it right there. The base runners couldn't advance as he caught it. Three and two, two outs. Runners will be up. There they go. Lynn strikes out. What a wasted opportunity. Bases loaded, nobody out. Ivan Nova gets out of it. Brent Gardner throws a strike to cut down a runner at the plate.
risk gamble here. Because it's in the first inning, because you're down by a run, and because of where you are in the, the lineup, you've got your number four hitter, doesn't get him in. Okay, number five is in there for a reason, to drive in the runs where their number four hitter does it. Fred Lewis takes a chance. He's thrown out at the plate, and a big inning goes away. Well, it's not on Fred Lewis totally. Brian Butterfield, third base coach, you saw him get very close to third base, and the coach at that time will say, stay or go. And he just took a gamble that Gardner would make a good throw. Curtis Granderson, the center fielder, with a ball and a strike. Blue Jays have handled him all year long. It was two for 24, and he's going to get on base. Quite a turn of events in the last half inning. Blue Jays had the bases loaded, nobody out. Looked like they're going to get right back into this game. And now, after not scoring, the leadoff man reaches. Tony Pena, Francisco Cervelli, and the pitcher Ivan Nova all having a conversation about how to get him into the flow of this game. Obviously, Blue Jays left him off the hook. I think that also has something to do with the runner at second base, what signs they're going to use. Maybe they change them as the inning goes along. Sometimes I have seen teams with one out, we're going to use the first sign. Two outs, we're going to use the second sign. There, there's so many different things you could do. Young Nova, not real sure right there. With a young pitcher like that, I wouldn't do anything complicated. Yeah. Just to have him be as simple as possible. Granderson at first. Eduardo Nunez, the young shortstop. Pretty excited about Nunez and what he brings to this ball club. He's already had a game-winning hit. Already hit a double. And he's got fine defensive skills. A ball on the strike to Nunez. But these Yankee hitters come up for the first time. They are they seem to be so schooled, don't they? Really have an idea at the plate. They just seem to be very polished hitters when they get to the big league for the first time. Nunez, 23 years old. Turned 23 on the 15th of June, but you came through the Yankee system. You know how demanding they are in the minor leagues. Everything is uniform. First team that I played for, where they had three coaches at every stop along the way, the minor leagues. Pitching coaches, hitting coaches. Sharply on the ground, should be two. Hill to Escobar at second, back to first, double play. Nunez hit it hard, but right up to second baseman who made quick work of it. Right at him. Position perfectly as Hill. You just have to catch that, get it to that bag, and let the shortstop do the rest. And that's exactly what he does. And Blue Jays turn another double play. And double play tandem. And Escobar with the cannon for an arm made it an easy play. Two quick outs now. That erases that hit batter. Romero Pena playing at third base in place of Alex Rodriguez, who's on the disabled list. Rodriguez had a strained calf muscle, tried to play through it. It just wasn't 100%, so they shut him down for 15 days. Yeah, first at bat the other day when they were at home in the ground ball and came back and did them. They don't lift. Lift off the field. Said, you know what, we're going to need you next month and the month after. Let's get you healthy. Inside, two balls and a strike to Pena. A little late movement on that fastball, and Pena just got a piece of it. Top of the second inning, Yankees have taken a one nothing lead. A two out opposite field double by Robinson Cano. Drove in Nick Swisher from first. Two balls, two strikes. Back out of play. 
Well, I love how Morrow has that ability to reach back and put a little bit extra on his pitches. You can see it when he starts to turn towards home plate that he just explodes out of his windup. Pena barely kept it alive there. Breaking ball hammered into right field. Bautista backs up, plays it on the big hop. High breaking ball, and Pena delivers a two out single to right. Not a bad idea to throw him a breaking ball, just came in a bad spot. That one hung over the middle of the plate. That's what Bruce Walton was saying before the game in his last start. He just didn't execute his pitches. Everything was up in the first inning. When he executes pitches and stays down, he is awfully tough. Francisco Cervelli, the Yankee catcher, batting with two outs. Cuts on the first pitch and it's a fly ball to left. Fred Lewis is there, makes the catch. The Blue Jays are out of the inning. Yankees strand the base runner. Yankees lead it one to nothing. Online that hit a home run with sharp.ca. Sharp Aquas with Quatron technology. You have to see it to see it. Second inning, it will be Hill over Bay and Incarnation to face Ivan Nova. Nova, the young right hander, got out of a sticky situation in the first. Bases loaded, nobody out. And kept the Blue Jays off the board. Looked shell shocked, didn't he? <laughs> Walking around going, uh oh, now what do I do? How many of these guys are going to get on base? <laughs> but he settled down and got a strike out of Linda in the inning. Aaron Hill lays off that high fastball. And that's what we heard about Nova. His fastball's going to be up. You just have to have the discipline to lay off that borderline strike. Ball on the strike to Hill. Aaron Hill did not start in yesterday's game. He was riding an 0 for 12. John McDonald started at second. McDonald actually started all three games in the Red Sox series. Two at third and one at second. Outside. How difficult is it to face a young pitcher that's all over the place? To have the discipline you need to hit him. You know what? I'm not looking for balls inside, outside, up or down. I'm looking for balls right in the middle of the plate. When you are facing young hitter, or excuse me, young pitchers like this, I always found it so much harder to hit an A ball. Didn't you? When the pitchers were all over the place, and it, it actually got easier the higher up you got in the minor leagues. When the pitchers start controlling the ball, then you can think along with them. Yeah. And with a young pitcher like this, obviously you can't pick up a pattern. Because he's missing his spots. Two and two to Hill. 
Bounced on the left side. Pena cuts in front of the shortstop and runs it to first one out. Yeah, when he throws one down and away, you're wondering, well, is that what he's trying to do there? But he might have been trying to throw the ball inside. Up, down the same way. Now, you know what? You know who really has trouble with pitchers like this? The New York Yankees. The Yankees, with all their veteran lineup, veteran hitters in this lineup, if they face a guy they haven't seen before, they really have problems. And that's why you got to look for the ball right down the middle. Yeah, this Yankees are so good at former at bats, recalling information, sticking to a game plan when they know a guy has a pattern. One out for Lyle Overbay. Down and in. But you make a great point. You could see it pitch down and in and think, oh, he's trying to pitch me inside. And then the next one could be all the way across the plate. That A ball, boy, you, you get uh, a couple of balls up at your head and then three on the block. You just never know where they're going with it. The ball on the strike, one out. Look a little off. Pretty good movement on the pitch down and away. Two balls and a strike to Overbay. That's got to be hard on a home plate umpire also calling the game when you've got a young guy out there and he can't find the plate. Very consistent of where he's trying to throw the ball. Right back up the middle. Good hop for the Blue Jays. That hit the seam and bounced right over Nunez's glove. Sharply hit. I don't know if Nunez was going to get it, but he dove for it, and that ball skipped right over his glove. He is making his first big league start at shortstop. You're right, he got there, but it hits the seam around second base. Overbay has been swinging the bat so well. There's the last hop up and over and out in the center field. Everything that Lyle is swinging at right now, he is hitting right on the button. Had a great series against the Red Sox. Off to a good start against the Yankees. Edwin Encarnacion did not play against Boston. Good to see him back in the lineup. Had a couple of home runs against the Yankees this year. Breaking ball. Fouled off. 0 and 2. Kind of shown injured his wrist diving for a ball in Oakland. Rolled over on his glove. He sprained his wrist. He could not play. In the Boston series. Cedar Gaston said he approached him and suggested he could pinch hit, but Cedar felt that was better just to give him the entire series off. He's got it taped up tonight. That left wrist. 0 and 2. Swung on and missed. High fastball gets in Carnation. Two down here. Second strikeout for Nova. He's got plenty of fastball. The ability to reach back and throw it by a hitter. This is a fastball. They wanted it up. It's an interesting guy again, just 23 years old. He's got the, the height. Six foot four. That nice fluid delivery. This year in the minor leagues, he really blossomed 12 and 3 with an ERA under 3. Bounced right back to the mound. Molina hits the one hopper to Nova. Yankees get out of the second. Nova settled down nicely here. New York leads it 1 to nothing after 2.
section 127, while Jesse Barfield and Tony Fernandez will be signing near section 117. For tickets, log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations or call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. That's Fan 590 Honda Fan Franks. Brett Gardner will lead things off here in the third inning. Gardner struck out his first time up. Takes a fastball strike. Gardner threw out Fred Lewis at the plate in the bottom of the first inning. That was his 10th outfield assist. Good curveball. 0 and 2. Breaking ball fouled him. Jorge Posada sitting next to Francisco Cervelli talking to young Ivan Nova. Posada, of course, the experience behind the plate. He had a pretty good mentor when he started out in Joe Girardi. Oh, and two to Gardner. Cut on and miss. Gardner goes down for a second time. How about that riser? Rising fastball from Brandon Morrow, and he takes care of Brett Gardner for the second time. He has that ability to pitch up there, up in the strike zone, because he throws so hard. Now well, we've seen a lot better fastball from Morrow tonight, and this is what we expected. Nick Swisher had the walk that led to the only run of the ball game. Came with one out in the first. Two ninety two average for Swisher with twenty two homers and seventy driven in. Ball on the strike. They are not afraid to hit with one strike. That looked like an ideal pitch for him to try and turn on. But he has always had a very good bait on base percentage. He's always been among the leaders in the American League in pitches seen per plate appearance. Nick Swisher. He's going to coax a few more pitches out of Brandon Morrow. Swisher a career 357 on base percentage. Pretty standard and he's going to get on base. Fight stopping off. The big improvement for Swisher this year has been his batting average. Hitting 292, his major league batting average is 245. And that's a big jump for a guy that's got seven years in the big leagues. Fitting into that number two hole, I think he's perfect. Switch hitter, sees a lot of pitches. You make a mistake, he can hurt you early in a ball game with a home run. Doesn't get flustered at all. Do you think it helps that this is his second year in a Yankee uniform? He had 249 last year, his first year with New York. And he's made a few adjustments at the play. Gone is that high leg kick that he used to have. He's a much more fluid at the plate, much more quiet. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball got him. Brandon Morrow came inside with the slider and strikes out Swisher. Now five on the night for Morrow. Excellent pitch. Watch where it is. It's at your hands and then it goes right underneath it. That's where you need to throw a good strikeout pitch to a left hander. So effective with two strikes. Now it's Mark Teixeira. No fastball ripped down the right field line. That'll go all the way to the wall. Teixeira around first, headed for second. Bautista bottled it. Teixeira continues around the bases. He'll end up at third base with two outs. You know, in his haste to try and get Teixeira at second base, Jose Bautista 
will probably get charged for an error. This ball down and in and ripped into the corner by Teixeira. He's got a beat on it, does Bautista, and he tries very quickly to get it out of his glove to try and get Teixeira at second base, but kicks it away. That will be his sixth error of the season. This is third error committed as an outfielder. He got to that ball when he went to grab it barehanded, kind of swiped it away from him. So to share is at third base. Robinson Cano drove in his 87th run in his first at bat. Well, to share it got on that low fastball. That's the difference from the pitch that he struck out. Nick Swisher that was up and went underneath his hands in that low fastball where a lefty could just drop the head of the bat. Two balls and no strikes to Cano. Robinson Cano is fourth in the American League in batting. Truly become one of the most dangerous hitters in the American League. Certainly it leads all major league second basemen with that 325 average. That's every second baseman in the big league. Hits and doubles, slugging percentage, RBIs. Probably going to win a gold glove also. Cano has just three errors this year. Two balls and a strike to share it at third. Good pitch running down and away. Cano didn't think so. Two and two. Moore's got a chance to get out of it. He has two strikeouts here in the third. Struck out the side in the first. Foul. Boy, Cano got to a tough pitch. That was a perfect pitch where Molina wanted it with good movement, and Cano spoiled it. They have a little hair on it, too. 96 miles an hour. He reaches back and he spoils it. You're right. He just gets his hands in and just plunks it down the right field line. So we'll do it again. And Cano will ask for a little time. Breaking ball got him. Morrow came back with a good curveball and strikes out Robinson Cano. His sixth of the night. Strands Mark to share at third. Coming inside again this time.
Community Clubhouse. John McIntyre, the Jays Care Foundation Board, is with us. Uh, John, how did this idea all come about? Well, this uh, really has the opportunity to become the uh, Jays in the community. Uh, we have the opportunity now to bring over 3,000 uh, kids here every year uh, to uh, experience the joy of a Blue Jays game who otherwise might not have the opportunity. So we've had excellent cooperation from uh, the players, they've all had a hand in designing uh, the suite and making it really uh, personalized for them. I just want to touch on the player participation a little bit more. I uh, saw the uh, on the elevator on the way up a couple of players I rode with were coming up here and how important is it that they participate and can you speak a little bit about their participation to this point? Well, really the big part of the Jays Foundation is uh, the player participation and that is everything from our fundraising to our actual program so in this particular suite we've got memorabilia we've got special mementos and special things that are important to the individual uh, players in their uh, development as baseball but also in their development and their contribution to the community. So we've got Vernon Wells' bat. We've got Adam Lynn's uh, ball from his first major league home run. We've got uh, uh, various memorabilia, and that's really what uh, makes it uh, part of what they're doing and uh, makes it a big contribution. You know, in, in the experiences of entertaining guests before, uh, tonight I see plenty of guests here. Whereabouts will those guests come from, and how will they be affected by coming in and visiting this area? Well, the foundation works with uh, hundreds of different local charities. Tonight is the uh, Sick Kids Foundation and the Toronto Community Housing Rookie League. So all of the programs that we have on outreach, uh, they're all going to be here as part, of our, uh, as part of our efforts. So 81 home games, we'll have 81 different groups, 40 or 50 kids at a time. It really uh, has the opportunity to become our voice in the community. Take play at first base, Buck. We'll send it upstairs. Back to you. Mark Teixeira is arguing he maintained contact with the base at first. Nunez has got some arm from deep short. He's a lot like the Blue Jays shortstop with a good arm. But you know, Junior Escobar has got a great arm. Yankees were telling us about his arm. Got plenty of it there. And it pulls off to share just a little bit. Maybe his spike was on there, but too close to tell. Right there, you can see the foot. Well, I tell you what. He felt like he was on the base. He was on top of the base, which was really kind of interesting. He had his toe on top of the base as opposed to up against the side of it, and that maintained contact a lot longer than normal. And when Mark Teixeira argues like that, he's got a beef. Blue Jays with an infield hit, Jose Bautista now. Up and in at 95. Bautista walked in the first. That loaded the bases with nobody out. But Nova would get out of it. He could turn around anybody's fastball, I'm convinced, in the American League. Ball on the strike. Well, there's no problem with Nova's velocity, 94-95. And just that uncertainty of where it's going has been a little bit of a problem, taking the edge away from the hitters so far. High breaking ball. I guess you could say that's effectively wild? Effectively, so far. I mean, they do have four hits in the third inning. I think you just got to just forget any kind of breaking ball right now, especially early in the count. And you just look for that fastball. If he gets one here inside, he might go large right here. Well, he handcuffed Mark <laughs> to share at first. <laughs> and pretty good movement on that fastball. You know, I, I'm laughing because Juan Guzman used to do the same thing. When he first came up to the big leagues, I'd play first base, and he would throw about 97 over there. And it was brutal to try and catch that ball. <laughs> Two balls in his strike. Escobar at first.
He can hit it at Betty's fastball. I don't care how hard you throw it, this guy's going to turn it around. Ed, and he knew it right away. How about that extension through the ball? He's so quick. Watch how fast that back comes through there. And that makes it into the second deck in left field. 24th home run Bautista has hit in this ballpark. 24 of 39. And he is wearing out the Yankees this year. Five times he has homered against them now. Bautista had a rough road trip. Going up against a couple of clubs that have always pitched him tough. Vernon Wells, big two hopper to short. Nunez throws it in the dirt, but the Sherrod digs it out. Two outs. You can see why Mark Teixeira was so adamant about him being on the base on that play by Escobar. Got his pitcher in a position where he had to come out of the stretch. Maybe throw an extra fastball with some speed. Good call over there by first base umpire Mark Wegner. Blue Jays capitalize on that. John Bautista driving home Escobar. Adelin struck out his first time up. Been swinging the bat very well of late. Little one off the end of the bat, but well found. Lynn started in Sunday's game against Clay Buckholz, but did not start against Daisuke Matsuzaka, a guy that's given him a lot of trouble. That was on Saturday. Out on the outside corner, it's a ball and two strikes. Two outs here in the third. Blue Jays have taken a 2-1 lead. And went right after that pitch in his first at bat. This time he lays off. Cervelli is very animated, the catcher for the New York Yankees, about where he wants that ball. Always pushing his pitcher. Breaking ball, line to Cano. Then hit it on the line, but right at the Yankees' second baseman, Jose Bautista has erased an early one nothing deficit. A two-run shot. This 39th. The Blue Jays lead it two to one. that you're talking about if it's too long the bottom half gets out in front of the the arm and that's why the ball rides up high telling him to shorten that up that'll help you stay on top of the ball a lot better 
Jorge Posada, one of the six strikeout victims of Morrow. Mar has struck out the side twice here tonight in the first and in the third. Another good fastball. Boy, that ball starts off the plate and runs back over the inside corner. Something that Brandon Morrow couldn't do when this season started. That two seam fastball with good movement. Now he's talking about setting up hitters, throwing to their weakness. Osada hits it to left field. Fred Lewis makes the catch one up. You can win an all-new Honda CRZ and other great prizes when you vote for the Honda Play of the Month. Vote today at BlueJays.com. Roof is closed at Rogers Center. It's been stormy all afternoon. Curtis Granderson was hit by a pitch his first time up. Takes a curveball for a strike. Well, that's a good sign. Brandon Morrow using that get-ahead curveball to Granderson. Went too far. Dale Scott down at third. Paul Granderson for the swing. You know, that's pitching. That's all you have to do. It's not, I'm going to get out there and cross-fire as many fastballs as I can. I've got to mix it up. Maybe throw a change-up first pitch. Maybe go ahead and deal a curveball. High fastball. Granderson swings and misses. Seven strikeouts for Morrow. You can see why Brandon Morrow's strikeouts per nine innings leads the American League. He's averaging over 10 strikeouts per nine innings pitch. When you have a fastball like that and a good breaking ball, you're going to pick up lots of strikeouts. That's 160 now that he has had this season. He ties him with Justin Verlander of the Tigers. Fifth in the American League. Jared Weaver, the Angels, leads with 189 strikeouts. And then Ken Felix Hernandez, 183. There's a long drive to left field. But Fred Lewis is back in front of the warning track that makes the catch. Quick inning for Brandon Morrow. Another strikeout, a three up, three down inning on nine pitches. See it. That'll be Hill over Bay and Carnation here in the fourth inning. The Blue Jays out in front, two to one. Jose Bautista's 39th home run of the season, a two-run shot. Ivan Nova was a first pitch strike to Aaron Hill.
Ball on the strike. Nova's third, excuse me, fourth major league appearance, first major league start. High fly ball, center field, but that's going to hang up for Granderson, who tracks it down just short of the warning track. One out here in the fourth. Let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Well, about a couple innings ago, you were talking about the game plan. I spoke to Dave Island about what he was going to do here with this rookie pitcher. He said, follow the catcher. Let Cervelli be your lead. He has the game plan in his mind and follow what he puts down. If you're dead adamant against something, then you can shake him off because I'd rather have my pitcher throw a bad pitch with conviction than a pitch he is uncertain about. So to this point, it's worked out pretty good for all three. Kyle Overbay swings and misses. That's the change up that he turns over and runs away from Overbay. But Cervelli's got the experience. No reason for a pitcher not to lean on his catcher in a situation where you're making your first start. I think it's a great idea. Just take that part away from him so that's one less thing. He needs to worry about. You just worry about your mechanics, finding your release point, and throwing quality strikes. All get you through this game. Ball on the strike. Just off the plate inside. I think that's the best approach for pitchers generally. Just clear their mind. The catcher should take the theory part of it, pitcher should take the execution part of it. You have a meeting before the game, put your heads together, and then just Get the pitcher to execute. Unless maybe you're the professor, Greg Maddox. <laughs> that guy was in total control all the time. But at the same time, he made sure he had his catcher behind the plate. And he'd sit down and tell you what he was going to do against the guy in the yeah. seventh inning. And if you couldn't stay up, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Three and one to Overbay. Cut on and missed. Another good off speed pitch. Maddox was so good at mapping out a game plan six seven innings into a ball game before he ever started. Oh and he could think like that too. You know when this guy comes up with the runner on here this is what I'm going to do to him. Three two to Overbay. Cut on and missed. Overbay goes down swinging. Jays on Roger Sportsland, brought to you by your local independently owned home hardware or home hardware building center. Homeowners helping homeowners. Two outs for Edwin Encarnacion. Blue Jays up two to one. Bounced right back over the mound. Cano from second base right on the money to get Encarnacion. Noah has a one, two, three, four inning. We're in a one run ball game after four. Fastballs up in the zone, good hard slider. This looks like the Brandon Morrow we saw against Tampa Bay. 
the last time he was on this mound. He had 17 strikeouts that game, and that's why you can see he leads the American League in strikeouts per nine innings at 10.48. Pretty impressive list of pitchers. Francisco Liriano of the Twins, Jared Weaver of the Angels, John Lester, we just saw the Red Sox, and then Colby Lewis of the Rangers. You have to have a strikeout pitch. And for me, Brandon Morrow's got two. He's got a very good breaking ball, very underrated, I think, curveball. He got Nick Swisher with it, and he's got a fastball that he can use up in the zone if he needs to. There's the fastball, evens a count and the ball on the strength. Romero Pena, the third baseman tonight. I've had hitters in the American League tell me they would much rather face the Red Sox starting staff and the Yankees starting staff than the Blue Jays starting staff. Just on a stuff basis. Movement, quality pitches, wicked change-ups from just about all of them, and then Morrow has the power. I, I bet you that, too. You know, the, the staff that the Blue Jays have is unique compared to the other staffs in the American League. They really utilize the off-speed pitch, the change-up. Of course, Sean Markham has a terrific changeup that served him so well when he threw the one hitter against Oakland. Ricky Romero does a great job with his changeup. Brett Cecil's developing a very good changeup to go along with his power fastball. 2 2 to Pena. Breaking ball up and away. Hurried at that time. Hurried through it. Slow down. I think Ricky Romero's stuff is nasty. Some of the best, best stuff I think in the American League when you talk stuff. Curveball, sliders, cutters, all of that. Fastball popped out of play. And I think pretty soon you're going to have to add Brandon Morrow's name to that. Oh, I agree with that 100%. When you look at Morrow, and he's been relatively efficient here tonight. 70 pitches into the fifth inning. But he's got the fastball. He throws two. He's got the hard curveball. We've seen the slider for the strikeout tonight. And we have seen him on nights have a good changeup. Full count. Strike three call. Pena thought it was outside, but it painted the outside corner. Strikeout number eight. When you show the umpire that you can own that outside part of the plate, he's going to give it to you. And he paints that outer plate. Look at Jose Molina. Frame it right there for him and show him. Tomorrow. Picks up the strikeouts with an awful lot of quality pitches. Right back ahead of Cervelli, the catcher. Fastball at 96. That's what you were talking about, a little extra whenever Morrow needs it. When he gets in his good delivery, he can add and subtract very effectively and still stay in the strike zone. Another thing that he has really worked on this year. I remember the start he had the last time he faced the Yankees in New York. He gave up a couple of home runs in the middle parts of that game, and Cito Gasta went out to talk to him and said, what's up? He said, well, I'm just cruising here. <laughs> Just trying to get through. Had an easy lead. Big lead early. Yeah. She just said, don't cruise here, please. <laughs> <laughs> a ball and two strikes. So now he lays off the slider. And another reminder of how young this pitching staff is. They're going to learn when you get a team down, you step on their throat. Don't give them a chance to even think about coming back. Yankees are one of the best at doing that. Full count. Little extra on that fastball, but he pulled it out of the zone. Bruce Walton, the pitching coach, would never pat himself on the back, but he has done a marvelous job bringing Brandon Morrow along. 3 2. Breaking ball got him. 
Cervelli couldn't take the hard breaking ball. Strikeout number nine. Two strikeouts in the inning. If the fastball doesn't work, let's get the three and two, and I'll drop that nasty hook on you. Confidence. Not afraid to throw it with a 3-2 count to the number nine batter, and he is rewarded with another strikeout. Back to the top of the order. Get ahead curveball. I mean, how do you hit that? Throws a 78 mile out curveball for strike one and then 97 <laughs> fastball. And then a harder breaking ball for the strikeout. Popped in the air. Aaron Hill will make the grab. Gardner's retired. A quick three up, three down, fifth inning. Brandon Morrow in command. Two to one, Blue Jays. that stroke in the back get that hand on top quickly uh, he had a good inning last time out of one two three fourth inning constant learning constant reminding young players this is going to help you to succeed because it's what you need to do just 23 years old I think he's a great example of drafting young players and you watch them develop through the farm system until they finally get it the light goes on Nova did not have a winning season in any of his full seasons in the minor leagues. He had a winning season in a short season that he had in A ball, rookie ball. But for a full season, he never had a winning record. He was just learning how to pitch. The only place winning really matters is in the big leagues. Right here. It's called developmental baseball, minor league baseball. That's where you learn. Jose Molina swings and drives it into center field. Curtis Granderson back in the power alley in front of the warning truck. Well, he, he finally figured it out this year. Minor leagues in Triple A, 12 and three with a 286 earned run average. He did that in 23 starts for Triple A. Well, when you really looked at it, he had 470 innings coming into this year, and his first year was spent in a Dominican summer league. He just pitched in 11 games through 39 innings. So it's a slow process. You build a foundation. But look at the high upside. Look at the body. 6'4", 210, drafted when he was 18 years old. Spent five years in the minor leagues learning and learning and learning, and all of a sudden the light comes on, and now you got something, he's only 23. Now, and that's one thing the Blue Jays have gotten back into Latin America. When you think about it, if you don't have a lot of American impact players on your roster, probably not going to compete. Fred Lewis drills this one to center field. Curtis Granderson back, has room, makes the catch. 
Lewis has hit the ball hard all night long. Singled his first time up, hit a bullet back through the mound his second time up, and then just misses this one. This one off the end of the bat just a little bit, probably to the deepest part of the ballpark, called in by Branderson right in front of the wall. But you look around baseball, and a lot of the star players coming out of Latin America in the Blue Jays now with Escobar is short. Echeverria in double A. Cuban free agent they've signed. They traded for Escobar. Think about the great clubs they had here in the World Series day. Candy Maldonado and Robbie Alomar, Guzman, Manny Lee. How about the players, Latin players that they used to trade to get some other great players like uh, Tony Fernandez, brought him Joe Carter, Juan Guzman. Escobar in a hole 0 and 2. Breaking ball hit off the end of the bat into left field. Gardner's got good speed, covers the ground, makes the catch. Another three up, three down inning for Nova. The instructions working. Dale Scott, but it was very unusual. Escobar was at shortstop waiting for his glove to be delivered by Edwin Encarnacion. Meals threw him out of the game from home plate. And then Cito comes out and says, how can you throw a guy out like that? I, I honestly don't know why Escobar or saw anything Escobar did during that entire inning. Here's the only thing I could see that there was a borderline pitch called in his last at bat. There's Escobar out at shortstop. And he was saying something like, you said something while you were running between first and second, whatever. And there he goes. He, like, throws him out of the game. Jose Molina tries to get out there before he throws him out, and Cito Gaston then gets pitched. Yeah, and then he says, you're gone, too. But how in the world can an umpire throw out a player who's over 100 feet away, doesn't know exactly what he's saying? You can turn around and hold your hands up like, man, that was a bad call. But you can't tell me the umpire could hear what Escobar was saying when he was at shortstop enough to warrant his ejection. No. I, I, I agree with you 100%. It doesn't make any sense. Manager goes out there to plead his case, and then he's tossed out also. And that's exactly. Cito Gas that I'm sure asked, well, how could you throw him out? What did he do from shortstop that caused you to throw him out? So Escobar is gone. John McDonald is at shortstop, and Brandon Morrow will try to get back in the groove. This is a pitch during the at bat. Escobar felt like it was high, went back to Mio. Didn't say much, but certainly the body language suggests he didn't agree with the call. But that's certainly not enough to no. 
draw the ire of the umpire. So John McDonald is in here in the sixth inning. Nick Swisher, a ball in the strike. Fouls it off. I mean, that was an unusual break in the action that really wasn't a break in the action. <laughs> <laughs> it never stopped. You but Cedar Gaston didn't waste any time expressing what he thought about the whole thing. A ball and two strikes. Morrow and Molina having a bit of a problem now. Molina getting some of that chalk on his fingers. You see the white chalk on his fingers to help Morrow pick up the signs. One and two. Strike three call. Swisher now is going to express his displeasure to Jerry Meals. And he's a lot closer yeah. than Escobar. A lot more demonstrative also than what you do know Escobar did. Now Joe Girardi is marking it. Meals. Nothing like a good old 2-1 ball game, huh? <laughs> well, the pitch is right there, right on the inner half. That is where Brandon Morrow has been living all night. Mark DeShera fouls off the first pitch. Ten strikeouts now for Brandon Morrow. Swisher's gone down twice. Morrow, his second highest strikeout total of the season. High breaking ball. Of course, the 17 strikeouts, he had two starts ago in that one hitter against Tampa Bay. A ball and a strike outside. To share, hit that double in the third on a low fastball. About knee high on the inner half of the plate, and he drilled it. That's a hard slider right there. Hard breaking ball at 86 miles an hour, especially when you put fastball in the mind of hitters. We're thinking fastball 2 1 on the inner half. It looks like one coming out of his hand and then just poof right under. Right under the bat head. Fastball cut on and missed at 96. 11 strikeouts for Morrow. Strikeouts per nine innings. Franchise leader. Brandon Morrow is on pace for the all-time record strikeouts per nine inning better than Clemens in 98 and 97 better than A.J. Burnett 07 and 08 big time strikeout pitchers there Morrow now is ahead of the pace set by Clemens in 97 and 98 Robbie Cano fouls that first pitch slider if he gets him again, then you know he's got something special tonight. Struck him out last time with a good curveball. Cano's trying to walk off the effect of that foul ball off the foot. Well, Brandon Morrow, I don't think he has to prove anything to anybody anymore. Alex Rodriguez on the disabled list. With a strained calf muscle, Derek Jeter getting the night off. Probably quietly thinking, hmm, this is a pretty good one to miss. <laughs> you think you could hit him? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> what would you be doing? <laughs> oh, and two. He will travel with the team here to Toronto, then on to Chicago. Just put on the DL a few days ago with that left calf strain. No balls, two strikes, two outs.
This is what the fans do at Yankee Stadium with two strikes. Start clapping, get into it. Maybe you get the call from the umpire on those borderline pitches. Just foul up the first baseline. 11 strikeouts for more. Two more in this inning. You know, I know he's throwing the ball and he's got outstanding stuff, but I think we got to talk about Jose Molina. He knows these hitters. Played on their team the last couple of years. He's calling a great game. Setting up these hitters. He knows what kind of stuff Brandon Morrow has tonight. The only reason you don't string it that one is when you can't hit it. Can't hit it. Can't do anything with it. And it's just off the plate. But again, a good call right there from Molina. Just got a piece of it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. We're at the top of the six. Brandon Morrow has held the Yankees to one run on three hits. Cano's not going to go easily. Tried something to him right there that I haven't seen him do before. Tried a backdoor breaking ball to a left-handed hitter. Mr. That pitch wanted it inside and missed all the way outside. The full count. Morrow threw a full count slider to Francisco Cervelli to strike him out in the fifth. Coming right back to it to Cano. Walking. A two out walk to Robbie Cano. We talk about this at the opening of this game, how well he has pitched here at home, and the numbers are standing up. 7-1 with a good ERA under three. Something about being home, sleeping in your own bed, eating right. Brandon Morrow is doing it right here at Rogers Center. Big numbers at home. He will improve on the road. The DH Jorge Posada. A strikeout and a flyout. Fastball missed downstairs. Morrow has thrown 98 pitches. It comes with a lot of strikeouts. We'll keep an eye on that bullpen. Bruce Walt was telling me before the game 100, 110 pitches is about his limit. That's drilled into the gap. Nobody's going to get this one. Cano's got a chance to score. He's coming around third. He's headed for home. He will score. A two-out double by Posada has tied this game up at two all. Two walks tonight issued by Morrow have both come around to score. On two-out doubles. First one by Robbie Cano in the first inning. Scoring. Nick Swisher and now Jorge Posano just keeps on rolling along. Still very quick on that fastball that's down and he rips it between Wells and Bautista. Off the wall. And that'll certainly be plenty of time to get Cano around the bases to tie the scale up. Cano scores easily. Cano drove the first one in, scores the second one. It's tied at two. Posada's RBI, his 45th of the season. Bruce Walton, the pitching coach, has come out to help more regroup here with two outs. Ian Molina talking about the approach to Curtis Granderson, the hitter. Ball is down, and Posada is such a good low ball hitter. Brandon Morrow caught too much of the play. You can see the reaction. 
Wanted that ball just a little bit further outside where Posada would have to reach for it. Right hander is Sean Camp. The left hander is Jesse Carlson. Sixth inning with two outs. The Yankees have tied it. Curtis Granderson, the center fielder. First pitch strike. Inside. Morrow hit Granderson in the leg his first time up. Trying to crowd him. Now throwing 101 pitches. He's had two high pitch count innings. The first and now the sixth. Everything else has been in line. Ball on a strike. Missed all the way back to the backstop. Posada will go to third. Eighth wild pitch of the season. He wanted it outside and pulled it across the inside. Threw it right by Molina. Had no chance of catching this one. Well, Molina is going to go out and talk Morrow through this. Just don't try any harder. And you can see the calm demeanor of Molina. And we know what a dramatic impact it's had on Morrow. Yeah, it certainly has. He has helped him through. He has been part pitching coach, part psychiatrist, part time catcher, a little bit of everything to go out there and help his young starter. I know if I was young, I'd love to be thrown to people like John Buck and Jose Molina. They've done a great job all year long. Two balls in his strike. Check in with Sam Casentino. Buxito Gaston was thinking about breaking that duo up today, but thought twice and said, hey, Molina's going to catch him, and it looks as if he'll get him the next two starts, too. Just the way the schedule plays out, Cito said today that, yeah, because of uh, day games and off days, pretty good chance that Molina will be behind the plate for each of Morrow's next two starts as well. well Molina catching two days in a row with his start yesterday in Boston. 2-2 two -two pitch. Strike three call. Morrow comes back and throws a great slider. He strikes out the side for the third time tonight. Twelve strikeouts on the night. Granderson looks at the high breaking ball. We are tied at two. Yankees and Blue Jays tied at 2 0, courtesy of TD Canada Trust. Big comfy chairs here, and they've seen a heck of a pitching performance from Brandon Morrow. Nick Leva, the acting manager, delivers the news that that's it, and certainly Morrow has given everything. 12 strikeouts in six innings. He leaves, allowing just four hits. 
Jose Bautista, a long drive, but this one is way foul into the upper deck. That's a Joe Carter foul ball. The pigeon got uh, roasted, scattered. <laughs> long fly ball. Bautista quickly to his feet, and Jerry Mills is warning. How can you warn a kid? In the first major league start, I don't get that. Now, he's been walking to the mound, and Joe Girardi is out to talk to him, and we got one going here. Dave Island getting into Baptiste's face, Island protecting his pitcher. Both pins now have joined in the mill around, and that's what we'll call it Molina calming down Baptista. Bautista obviously felt that there was some intent behind that pitch. But once again, I'm going to question Jerry Meals, the home plate yeah, umpire. The kid's making his first major league start. He's trying to get through this inning. We have chronicled it all game long. After every half inning, catchers talking to him, pitching coaches talking to him. Everybody's just trying to get him through this game. And then the umpire's going to warn a pitcher making his first start like he actually knew where he was throwing it. Well, you know what? That really hampers the Blue Jays because if the Blue Jays then come out and one gets away, he's already worn both benches. The pitcher's automatically out, so is the manager. Bautista homered earlier, and I think this is what this was all about. They wanted a fastball inside, and now he's going to say something to him. And there's the warning right there from the home plate umpire. And then Bautista said something to Nova, and Nova raised his hands up, so you got a problem with me, and then the Nova came right back at him. But I don't think any of this would have happened had Mio's not warned, because he's right there by Bautista, and Bautista sees the warning, and Jose said, well, if he thinks it's a warning, I'm going to back it up. Yeah. And then Cervelli and Joe Girardi get in front of Bautista. I believe Nova was trying to pitch inside. Inside, yeah. You know, there was no intent there. I mean, the frightening thing is it was up around Jose. Yeah, and, and he's got the right to say something to him. Absolutely. Jose Bautista could say say that, but uh... I don't think it warranted a, a warning. A ball and a strike. Bautista high fly ball center field, but that'll stay in the ballpark. One out. Bautista runs by Noah. Jerry Meals is all the way out to the mound to make sure nothing else happens. And to his credit, Bautista didn't say a word. But you know he would have loved to. Vernon Wells. Breaking ball, laid off. Appeal denied by Mark Wagner down at first. Well, if you thought the Blue Jays were all about laying down for the Yankees, think again. Nope. Nope. They are going to come out here, play with some pride themselves. Two breaking balls, two balls. Vernon Wells was launching some balls in batting practice. I mean, really aired it out. Good time to do that here, 2-0. Good fastball outside the corner. Bautista with the two-run home run in the third. Wells fouls it back. Two two ball game here, bottom of the sixth inning. Some fireworks. Ivan Nova making his first major league start, holding his own. Jose Bautista took him deep. Pulled on the ground. Pena in time.
That play worked because there was two strikes and Pena had to move back, respecting the top of uh, Vernon Wells. He's just too deep to come in and try and throw him out. Transfer the ball bounces and Wells beats it out. Infield single, just the sixth hit of the night for the Blue Jays. Joe Girardi has come to the mound. He'll take the ball from Ivan Nova, who will lead this tie game 2 2. He leaves, allowing six hits, two runs. He's responsible for Wells at first. Blue Jay fans letting him know what they think. A great ball game here in Yankee Stadium. 2 2. Boone Logan when we come back. Ivan Nova lifted from this ball game, pitched five and a third, allowed six hits, walked just one batter and struck out three. Gave up the two-run home run, and he probably gave the Yankees more than they'd hoped for. Pitching into the sixth inning, who will now turn it over to that bullpen, and the only left-hander down in the bullpen for Joe Girardi is going to come in now to face Adam Lynn. Boone Logan, good numbers. And he is on a hot streak himself. He has retired 30 of his last 36 batters that he has faced. He saw Jerry Mills, the home plate umpire, go out to Logan before or after he finished his warm up pitches to remind him that this game has, will be played under a warning now. So Logan is aware of that. Obviously, everybody's aware of that. But you got to remind the pitcher when he comes into a ball game. Okay, there's a warning in place. Wells at first, and then go for two. Two two ball game. Logan will check on Wells. Vernon five for eight in steals. Doesn't run as much as he did early in his career. Breaking ball cut on and missed by Lynn. Lynn's faced Logan only once. He's over one. Spent some time over in the National League to food Logan. With Atlanta. Came over. With Javier Vasquez in exchange for Mike Dunn, Milky Cabrera, and a minor leaguer. Logan starting out with the White Sox. Okay, came to Chicago in 2006, appeared in 21 games. Java Chamberlain, the big right hander, loosening up. Drew that throw. He took a little jab step towards second, and Logan saw that. First game of three between these two ball clubs, and already been some fireworks. Now 
the breaking ball. 0 and 2. 29,098 here for Monday night. First game matchup. And they're watching a good one. A little bit of everything tonight. Play at first base. That helped the Blue Jays get a run right before the Bautista home run. Had a runner thrown out at the plate of the first inning. Little benches clearing shouting match. 12 strikeouts from Brandon Moore. A little bit of everything. Strikes out. Luger, Logan comes in and gets the strikeout. You could win an all new Honda CRZ and other great prizes when you vote for the Honda Play of the Month. Vote today at BlueJays.com. Well, Dave Island will come out of the dugout and talk things over with Boone Logan. Right hander, Aaron Hill will be at the plate. Just a little reminder on how Joe Girardi wants Hill pitch to. Overbay on deck. Throw strikes, but don't give him anything good to hit. <laughs> don't let this guy hurt you. <laughs> you got the left hander on deck, and Logan handled Adam Lynn very quickly. Wells at first. Fouled straight back. Logan's got a good arm. Blue Jays saw him when he pitched with the White Sox out of their bullpen. As we mentioned, he came up in 06. Pitched in 68 games in 07, 55, and 08 before he went to Atlanta. Six foot five and just 26 years old. A ball. No balls and a strike to Aaron Hill. Two outs. Wells at first. Way outside. Dave Island looking through the scouting reports, thinking about matchups. Wells will go back to first. Very concerned about Wells trying to steal. Cervelli's only thrown out 15% of the base runners. Yeah, he's got a good arm, but it hasn't been very accurate this year. I'm just thinking if they do try to steal, they take the bat out of his hands. Aaron Hill. Which might not be a bad thing because Lyle Overbay is so hot behind him. Those are the decisions that you have to make if you're the manager. You know what? These decisions are in black and white. <laughs> I mean, Hill has not swung the bat well. He is now 0 for 14. But he's dangerous. Pops this one up into right field. Swisher is there, and Hill's retired. Blue Jay strand the base runner. Ivan Nova, his first major league starts a good one. Sean Camp will come on to work the seventh. We are tied at two.
was on. You see Jim Joyce, the umpire, try to get between him, but nothing was going to stop Posada and Carlson at that point. So this is nothing new between these two ball clubs. You got the A-Rod, Howie Clark, I got it, mine, 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 pop up. New pitcher is Sean Kemp. That was a first pitch strike to Eduardo Nunez. What a job by Brandon Morrow. Six innings, 12 strikeouts, just two walks. Both of them come around to score. He's going to turn it over now. After that, no decision. The Sean Camp, who has pitched excellent baseball this season for the Blue Jays. Ball and two strikes to Nunez. Chases that slider. Went out here in the seventh. Camp has just eaten up right handed batters this year, just like that. Sinker up the inside part of the plate. Let me spin that frisbee slider off the plate, and he strikes him out. Right? He's against Sean Camp hitting just 215. You can see why. Went out here in the seventh. 2 2 ball game. Switch hitter Romero Pena. Molina reminding Encarnacion down at third that he's a threat to run. Line drive into center field and get down for a base hit. Pena's got a couple of hits tonight. Two for three. Pena gets the one out single. The catcher, Francisco Cervelli, 0 for 2. Yankees can play hit and run with this combination here. Pena at first, Cervelli at the plate. Let's try to get something going here against Camp. Cervelli takes the first pitch strike. Rob Thompson, the third base coach, going through the signs. You play hit and run, and even if he hits a grounder on the infield, you've got a runner in scoring position for Gardner. Yankees have been so good at hitting with runners in scoring position and coming back to win games. That's how you defuse a hit and run. Yeah, can't do it now. 0 oh, 2. <laughs> Cervelli got off to an unbelievable start this year offensively. They knew he was a good catcher. And he could catch in the big leagues right away. They weren't sure about his bat. He got off to a fantastic start. Snap throw to first in. Pena gets back. It now has come back down to earth offensively. Well, you get a catcher that's got 223 at bats driving in 32 runs. That's good production. Your backup catcher. Another snap throw to first off line. We have had a little bit of everything in this game. Morrow's 12 strikeouts, a two run home run by Bautista, the major league leader in home runs. Now Scott Downs starts to loosen up. We've had two ejections. Junel Escobar and Cito Gaston both got tossed after the fifth. The benches and bullpens have emptied, got their sprints in, and we're still tied at two. Perfect setup. A ball and two strikes. Sean Camp in his first inning of work here in the seventh. Pena at first with a single. Throw into the runner. Overbay knocked it down. He kept the ball right there at first. Snap throw by Camp, and it's in the dirt. The ball, the runner, and Overbay all meet at the same spot that time. It bounced right into the ribs of Pena. Just trying to block that ball any way you can if you're the first baseman, if there is a throw off line. 
A ball and two strikes to Cervetto. Fastball missed the outside corner. Camp with that sinking fastball can get you a ground ball. That's what he's looking for right here. Two balls, two strikes. There goes Pena at first. Ball hit into right field. Bautista will make the grab. Pena's all the way over to third, and he sold out on the hit and run. Blue Jays get the double play to end the inning. Not much you can do about that. Try to go back. So Pena just kept running. Bautista is credited with an easy outfield assist. Another assist for Bautista, but on that ball right there, it's a hit on the line. You're not going to get back to first, so you might as well keep going to third. Mm -hmm. Lyle Overbay will face Boone Logan. Logan. Came on with a runner at first and one out. Got Lind and Hill to end the inning. Bottom of the seventh inning at a 2 2 tie. It has been just about a little bit of everything here tonight. We've had home runs and strikeouts, double plays, ejections. Been a good ball game. When both of these teams get together every time there's something going on. Remember the series that they had last time here? Exciting. One run games. Blue Jays won a 14 inning affair on a walk off hit by Aaron Hill. Two balls and a strike. Over a 248 hitter against the left handed pitching. Lays off that breaking ball. Five of his 16 home runs have come against lefties.
could win an all-new Honda CRZ and other great prizes when you vote for the Honda Play of the Month. Vote today at BlueJays.com. Joe Girardi has come out of the bullpen. He has made the call for the right-hander. Boone Logan was assigned three batters. He got one of the two lefties and Aaron Hill to end the inning. When we come back, it'll be Java Chamberlain to face Edwin and Carnes Statistical information provided by Stats Inc. Music provided by Universal Canada. We got a good one going here at Rogers Center. We are in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's a 2 2 ball game. Kyle Overbay with the leadoff walk. Joe Girardi goes to the pen and calls upon Big Java Chamberlain. Java Chamberlain has lost his setup man's role in the eighth inning. That now belongs to Dave Robertson, and he has now pitched better. Coming into the seventh inning over his last 12 appearances, he has only given up four hits and one earned run. He's got dynamic stuff. Good fastball and a good wipeout slider that he can pick up his strikeouts with. But they have moved him out of that setup role, and he has pitched much better now in the sixth and seventh inning for Joe Girardi. Edwin Encarnacion checks his swing and fouls it back to the screen. A strike out and a ground out for Incarnacion. Over Bay at first with the leadoff walk. Breaking ball, little flare in the right field. Swisher coming on. Acts like he doesn't see it, but Over Bay picked up on that. Pretty smart. You know, as a base runner, when you see that happen, you're, you're caught in no man's land. You lean towards second base if the ball falls in. Swisher had that one all the way, just acted like he didn't see it. Maybe he gets Lyle to take a couple of steps towards second, then he can double them off. Quick thinking by Swisher. So there's one out now, over base still at first. Jose Molino for two. Bounced, but not far enough for Overbay to advance. Calvin Chamberlain was a starter last year for New York. But before he moved in the starting rotation, this was a guy who averaged about a strikeout an inning as a reliever. Dynamite. And the eighth inning for New York. Went to the starting rotation last year and did okay. But seems to have regressed to this year. Basically lost that rotation spot to Phil Hughes back in spring training. And Hughes is 
turned out to be what they expected. Used with 15 wins. Two balls, no strikes. Molina hits it in the air to left field. Gardner is there. Molina's retired. There are two outs. So with Overbay at first, got the leadoff walk. Blue Jays haven't been able to move him around the bases. So now we'll have Fred Lewis to face Java Chamberlain. Lewis has hit the ball hard a couple of times tonight. Ball up in the way. Chamberlain's got the velocity back. That's what we saw when he first came onto the scene late in 2007. Pitched in 19 games for the Yankees down the stretch. Had a sparkling 0.38 earned run average. First game was right here in this ballpark against the Blue Jays. Last couple of seasons. We were talking earlier about strikeouts per nine innings with Brandon Morrow in the last couple of innings. Java Chamberlain strikeouts per nine innings has been fourth best in the American League. Not much going on over at first. A ball and a strike to you, Fred Lewis. Two outs here in the seventh. Stairs. The Yankees have a distinct idea that they can get Fred Lewis out with inside fastballs. Back to run the fastball in, about thigh high and higher. That was evident the first time we saw the Yankees against Fred Lewis when A.J. Burnett was on the mound. Just kept pounding him in fastballs on the inner half, in and up. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. It'll be tough to pull his fastball. But if you get the breaking ball and he can get the hit out, there's all kind of room in right center field. Look at Curtis Granderson, the center fielder, shading him to left field. It's a line drive over Robinson Cano. He can run all day. Three and one. Fly ball. Left center. Granderson gets over in the power alley. Waits for it and makes the catch. Java Chamberlain comes out of the bullpen and retires all three batters he faced. We'll go to the eighth in a 2 2 tie.
chance to win prizes in the Burger King Super Fan Contest. Brandon Morrow with another fine outing. Six innings of four hit ball. He got down early, but never let that affect him. Yeah, and unfortunately, the two walks that he gave up tonight, both of them came around to score because of good clutch hitting by the Yankees. A two-out double by Cano in the first inning and a two-out double by Posada in the sixth inning. So he's gone. Camp with a very good inning last inning and now Scott Downs here in the eighth inning. Been a real strength of the Blue Jays. There's the depth in their bullpen and now Scott Downs will try to work through the top of the order here in the eighth. Brett Garner 0 for 3 against Brandon Morrow swings at the first pitch. Let's check in with Sam Cosentino. Buck, I think you have to uh, compare tonight's start by Brandon Morrow very favorably with what Brett Cecil did against the Boston Red Sox. Both guys were coming off an extremely long layoff, having missed a start in between. Both were very average in the first start back from that long layoff. Both were very good in the second start back. Morrow was exceptional here tonight. Downs throws a good fastball to Gardner. Brett Cecil, Sean Markham. Always talking about pitching. All the starters when they aren't in the ball game will sit and exchange ideas. Nick Leva is the manager. Cito Gaston was ejected along with his shortstop Junel Escobar after the bottom of the fifth inning. Gardner slashes it down the left field line. This is a foul ball. Escobar was ejected by home plate umpire Jerry Meals as Escobar was waiting for his glove out near shortstop. Meals was at home plate. They got into a long distance discussion and Meals threw out the shortstop and then Cedar Gaston came out and he was quickly tossed as well. No balls and two strikes here. Downs working to his first hitter. Breaking ball. Gardner lays off. Keep this guy off the bases. He's got great speed. 35 stolen bases. Breaking ball in the dirt. They make great point about Brett Gardner. You want to keep him off the bases. Good eye at the plate. Second most walks on the Yankees team. Third ball just off the inside corner. Team. Keep that arm out there, possibly take one for the team. Sweeping curveball from Downs. And he didn't give an inch. Brett Gardner has five homers this year, but not a home run threat. Three balls, two strikes. Strike three call. Downs delivers a good pitch up and away. From Gardner, who strikes out for a third time here tonight. Just couldn't pull the trigger on this fastball. It's in a good spot. Away. And it gets plenty of the plate also. Well, that's a big out to keep him off the bases. Good 3 2 pitch from Scott Downs. Nick Swisher, the switch hitter. Well, turn around and bat right handed for the first time tonight. Doesn't have the power like he does from the left side. Not half the at bats, just three home runs from the right side. Average at 287 is a right handed hitter. One out here in the eighth.
Bouncing ball through the infield into right. Swisher comes through with a one out single. Clutch hitter. Uh, he takes what you give him. Right there, he knew he had to get on base and he went with the outside pitch. And he also knows that Scott Downs likes to sink his fastball like that. Instead of trying to pull it, he just stayed right with it and banged it into right field. Now they got the big RBI man up. Mark Teixeira. A much better average hitter from the right side. It's the first pitch strike from Downs. Lots of things going on in this game. The Yankees have so much versatility because of the switch hitters. Teixeira has not fared well against Downs in his career. Four switch hitters in their starting lineup tonight for the New York Yankees. Bounced on the ground. Hill at second to one. McDonald turns it. Downs gets out of it. John McDonald came on in the game defensively in the sixth and turns a nifty double play to get Downs out of the inning. Hill with the shovel to the shortstop. Off balance throw on the money. Without a mark to share New pitcher for the Yankees will be David Robertson. After Chamberlain had a very good one inning of work, it'll be the set of guy, David Robertson. Now taking over at the eighth inning, Robertson's got a very good arm. His fastball is a curveball. He'll cut that fastball a little bit also. Since May the 16th, he has been lights out. 34 appearances, 31 of them scoreless. He's allowed seven earned runs and three appearances during that span. Pretty impressive numbers. They've got some hard throwers that come out of that bullpen from the right side and from the left side. Very deep bullpen for Joe Girardi. Robertson, 25 years old. That was a first pitch fastball to John McDonald. McDonald batting for the first time tonight. He's played a lot recently and done a good job. Had a three hit game in Boston. Played all three games, the first two games at third base. The final game at second. Robbed of a couple of hits also in Boston. Hitting the ball hard. Watching Johnny Mack, he's been very aggressive. More so than we remember. As soon as he steps into that batter's box, he is taking a healthy swing the first pitch he sees. Ball on a strike. Foul back. You heard the fan react to that up and in fastball from David Robertson. And Jose Bautista's last at bat in the sixth inning against Nova. Nova threw one upstairs near 
Bautista's head, and Jerry Mills, the home plate umpire, issued a warning to both clubs. Curveball swung on and missed. Robertson picks up his first strike out. A good curveball gets John McDonald. You got to start a, a little earlier when somebody throws hard and then you're susceptible to an off speed pitch. Right over the top, he spins that curveball for the first out. Two run home run. That was number 39 for Bautista. Back in the third inning. Fastball on the corner. The closer, Kevin Gregg. Ready down in the bullpen. Bautista long drive to left field. He's done it again. Number 40 for Jose Bautista. We were talking earlier about Jose Bautista can turn anybody's fastball around, especially if you miss your spot. That was a no doubt blue dart to left field from Jose Bautista. Another two home run game. Robertson got ahead with a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Watch Cervelli. He wants it out there again and he misses. And that's all you need. Bautista knew he got number two. A no doubter to left, his second of the night. Three to two Blue Jays. All Jose Bautista. The curtain call. see a lot of emotions expressed from Bautista but given what he thought happened in the sixth a little retribution in his own mind forty home runs for Bautista the last Blue Jay to hit forty Carlos Delgado in two thousand and three had forty two You know, now you got to start talking about, well, is the team record for home runs in a season safe? He's getting closer and closer. George Bell, 47. Three and two to Wells. Boy, you miss your spot to a home run hitter, and they are going to make you pay. Robertson tried to double up with a fastball away and got burned when he missed it. One out, walk. Take another look at the long home run off the bat of Bautista and his reaction. So quick on the inner half. Comes through there so quickly. And there's that reaction, and I'm sure he feels pretty good after what he thought was a pitch thrown up and in at him. There's no doubt Jose Bautista thought that was intentional. And he proved that in the sixth inning when he went out to question Nova. Adam Lynn takes his strike. Bautista with two home runs tonight. His sixth multi-home run of this season. His eighth career multi-home run game. Is that 18 now for the team? He's now hit 25 of his 40 home runs here at Rogers Center.
Only the fourth home run allowed by David Robertson. He's been pitching great baseball. So they have elevated him into that setup role. Has not allowed to run his last 19 appearances until Bautista came to the plate. A ball and two strikes. One out here in the eighth. Blue Jays have taken a 3-2 lead. Jose Bautista's second home run of the night. Trying to get Lynn to chase that high fastball. Brennan Wells had a little bit bigger lead over there at first base. He actually had one foot on the carpet and was leading to second. It's another big run out there. The Yankees in the ninth will send Cano, Pusada, and Granderson to the plate. Tough part of the Yankee lineup. And strikes out. Robertson gets his second strike out of the inning. Two home runs tonight for Jose Bautista. He now has 40. He's blowing away the American League. Cabrera and Conerco with 31. Hamilton with 28. Two other players tied with 27. He now has 95 ribbies. What a season for Bautista. You know, in a calendar year now, he is up over 50 with the 10 home runs that he hit last year in September. Wow. Aaron Hill takes a strike. Bautista, two RBIs behind Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez has 97. He's second to Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers. Cabrera has 102 ribbies. Curve ball. Hill got a piece of it. Two. Strike three call. Fastball gets Aaron Hill. Kevin Gregg, he's ready to come on to work the top of the night. The Blue Jays lead three to two on Jose Bautista's second home run of the night. Number 40.
Kevin Gregg will continue the parade out of the bullpen. Sean Kemp, Scott Downs, now Kevin Gregg looking for his 28th save of the season. 213 batting average. Last time we saw him was back on the 15th when he came out of the bullpen to pick up that save at Los Angeles. Struck out the side. Cano, Posada, and Granderson, the scheduled hitters. A ball and a strike. It's been some ball game to open up the series. The Blue Jays hold a 5 4 edge over the Yankees in the season series. A ball and a strike. Just down the stairs. Good pitch. That's where you've got to stay. Great kid. Sink the ball. Cutting it a little bit more against left handers on the back door. Slider missed down and in. Cano has driven in a run and scored a run here tonight. Jorge Posada is on deck. He drove in the second run for the Yankees. Down straight back. Cano drove in six Sunday against Seattle, including his fourth career grand slam. Tonight he's one for two, double, struck out, and walk. Outfield playing deep. They don't want anything over their heads to stay in the park. Lead off walk. Derek Jeter, who did not start in the game. Austin Kearns also swinging the bat very well. They both have bats standing ready. Joe Girardi right down there to talk to his captain. The Yankees, there's something about them, their ability to come back. They're world champions. 40 come from behind victories this season, which is a major league high. Rosada takes a ball outside. Kevin Gregg looking for his 28th save of the season. Popped up. And that'll drift back behind the Blue Jays dugout. Rosada just one for seven against Kevin Gregg. Craig struck him out three times. Right now, he'd discount the strikeout and take a ground ball. And he can get it. When he sinks that ball, he's got to stay on the plate. Posada's very good at recognizing strikes. Not afraid to hit in these tough situations. Fly ball, deep center field. Bautista over in the gap on the warning track makes the catch. Posada's retired. Cano returns to first. That's why you play deep. No double. Nothing over your head. They were only a couple of steps from the warning track. All the outfielder Posada thought he got enough of it. Put that at Yankee Stadium, and that's a home run. But here they can haul it in in the gap. Derek Jeter has come out on deck. He would bat for Nunez if Granderson can stay out of a double play. Granderson also has home run power. 13 of them this year, but 30 last year when he was with the Tigers. Granderson's tough to double up. He's grounded in to just one double play this season. Good fastball from Greg gets ahead.
Three two ball game ninth inning. Good pitch showing two. Stay out there. Make him reach for the ball. Granderson is very good at pulling inside pitches. He's very quick on the inner half. 0 oh 2. Track 3 call. Granderson's going to argue is off the plate. And Jerry Mills rings him up. Two outs here in the ninth. That's why you have to stay away from it. Who throws the fastball in the outside part of the plate? Jose, now, excuse me, Jose Molina out there frames it. Granderson doesn't believe it. This one is off the plate, but Neal's very generous. That's to put it mildly. <laughs> Kevin Gregg needs one more out. Derek Jeter will come on as the pinch hitter. Pinch hitting for Nunez, the shortstop. First pitch strike. Only the second pinch hitting appearance for Jeter this year. He's one for one. Two outs, a man at first. Popped up. Overbay in foul territory. Calling for it. Makes the catch. The Blue Jays win it. Kevin Gregg, his 28th save of the season. Scott Downs, the winner in relief. Jose Bautista, two home runs. 39 and 40. He drives home all three runs. The Blue Jays win the first game. What a job by Brandon Morrow. Six very strong innings, 12 strikeouts, just four hits given up. You know, Escobar gets thrown out of the game. Johnny Mack comes in. Jose Bautista, though, the story, the hitting story in this game with those two long home runs, and the bullpen shuts down a very powerful Yankee team.